Look, it's great to meet you. It's great to meet great you. Great to meet you in person. Let me uh, check my hair here. It's like always messy. <laughs> um, how are you? Well, we. I am an older mirror version of you because I am a Kiwi who basically lives in Europe. And uh, you are an Italian who went to New Zealand. <laughs> Well, would you like to uh, start a more formal conversation Absolutely. about the? So let, let me ask you some questions. Um, now, I understand you had around about two hundred and fifty films uh, submitted to the festival. I mean, were you surprised by how many there were? Um, so yeah, we really uh, were quite new to the whole process. Of organizing, you know, film festival, um, you know, using Film Freeway uh, as a platform, uh, and to be fair, I had um, no idea of how many submissions we would receive. I was actually concerned that we wouldn't receive that many because so the fact that uh, you know the the, the festival um, wasn't, you know, known it wasn't wasn't a known entity. So we really tried to encourage submissions by keeping the. Uh, cost of submissions very low. Um, for the first year, basically, um, people could submit the films for uh, next to nothing, like uh, 10 New Zealand dollars, which basically covered uh, more or less the expenses of uh, using Film Freeway as a platform. Um, and um, yeah, we were really surprised to receive 250 uh, submissions. Most of the submissions were from overseas. Uh, and I, I I think the the reason for that number of submissions has to do with uh, one film freeway, which is like a very popular platform now. I think uh, uh, you know most filmmakers when I send their films to uh, festivals use the platform, and you have like um, hundreds of uh, if not thousands of festivals on that platform. Um, and then uh, two the popularity of poetry film as a medium, as a form of expression, uh, and the fact that there is uh, more and more, um, you know, poetry film festivals. And as a result of that, there is like a growing interest yes. in, the, the, mm. in the particular form. So yeah, we received uh, a lot of um, international films, some New Zealand films, and then student films made by both um, overseas it's... filmmakers and and uh, local ones as well. How did you choose your your jury? Um, so what we did is we established like a, a jury. We formed a jury uh, composed of four judges. You know, quite similar to what you guys did because we had um, one established filmmaker, Paul Wolfram, who was a documentary maker. Um, he's also a colleague of mine here at the university where he teaches um, film production. We had um, a, a poet, um, Chris Price, who's an established, um, you know, poet and um, you know widely published. She's also a colleague at Victoria. She teaches in the Institute of Modern Letters um, here in Wellington, which is part of uh, Victoria University. Um, and then we had uh, um, Charles Olson and. Uh, Ilian Payares, so whom you know, and they, yes. they are you know, poets and filmmakers, you know, you yes. know, poetry film practitioners. Yes, exactly. Um, and yes. Um, you know, we watched um, uh, literally hundreds of films, but uh, you know, it was uh, great as well. It was great to see that uh, variety of styles, that variety of uh, aesthetics and approaches to um to poetry film which was um, really cool yeah exactly no no that that um variety is very very evident e even for me when you gave me access i, I probably watched about you know 20 uh, of the films that were submitted to your festival some of them i know like um that charles olsen one yanto congelado i you know I, it's a beautiful film i've seen it before but tell me why do you think poetry film is so popular? Well, I, I think uh, there are several reasons. First of all, well, I, I guess um, 
uh, first of all, you know, poetry film is a pretty uh, broad notion that can yes. be interpreted in different ways, and people yes. from uh, different backgrounds yes. can be uh, interested in it. You know, you have, and, and uh, so that's something I experienced when organizing the festival because I'm not a poet myself. I, you know, I, I got to poetry film because uh, a few years ago I was commissioned uh, the production of. Um, a film based on the Divine Comedy, a series of three films based oh. on the last uh, cantos of each book of the Divine Comedy. Well, that was uh, um, a project uh, commissioned by the um, Italian Institute of Culture in Australia for the anniversary of Dante's death, okay. um, 700th anniversary of Dante's death. And they basically commissioned this uh, series of three films one about Inferno, one about Paradiso, one about Purgatorio. Okay. Um, and uh, each uh, little film revolved around the, the last canto of each book. Oh, wow. And and um, I directed one and I got um, um, former students and colleagues to direct the other, the other two. Uh, and that was like a, my first encounter with uh, with a poetry film, you know, from a you know filmmaker's perspective. And then uh, I... Um, you know, while while you know preparing and um, working on these films, I, I watched a number of other poetry films, and I became interested in myself. And then I ended up producing a, a few more uh, poetry films. Uh, and so, you know, going back to your question, why is it so popular? I think a, a, one reason is because these various um, entry points into the um, into the medium, into this kind of form of filmmaking, you know, poets are interested in poetry film because of uh, because they come from you know the literary poetry background, and then it, like it's another sort of uh, form of uh, adapting and uh, expressing poetry. Um, you know, filmmakers are, you know can become interested, like it happened to me uh, almost by 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 chance, I guess. Um, and then you have, uh, um, you know, younger people um, who don't necessarily have like a huge experience in terms of uh, uh, filmmaking or, or or writing poetry that you know engage with this medium because I think uh, there is no pres prescriptive uh, way yes. of doing poetry. So you know you can do it. Uh, you know, using a lot of money, you know, yeah. in the festival, we had, uh, a, you know, really high budget um, films with great production values and, um, you know, amazing visuals and amazing um, soundtracks. But yes. also, you, you, you can potentially make it with uh, very little resources. Yes. And because of uh, the, um, you know, the, the openness of um, poetry you know the, the fact that it can be adapted in so many different ways because the, yes. the you know the meaning is often uh, um open to uh, in, you know interpretations and so on you can uh, you can take an experimental approach to it you can uh, do it through animation you can do it uh, you know through live action sequences more or less narrative but what, what i'm trying to say is that it can be done quite cheaply as well you know it can it be can, done and... with limited resources and you know we had some amazing student films that um, were great, very powerful, and yet um, they didn't uh, involve that many resources. You know they they achieved the result through editing or you know through you know some you know few but powerful shots. Yes. Um, so so the fact that uh, is an approachable medium. Yes. Um, yeah. it, that doesn't require huge resources. I mean, you can uh, you can uh, put the the kind of resources that you want into it, and the, the kind of resources that uh, um, you know. You yes, have if you it, have, it's uh, it's it, in that sense, it's a very I guess a very kind of democratic medium because you know basically you just need a mobile phone. I mean, you know, you can make a poetry film with a mobile phone if you have a little bit of acquaintance with editing software. You have a you you've made a poetry film. But it is, in that sense, I think it's marvellous that there's this opportunity for people to express themselves. But then on the other side, um, aren't a lot of these poetry films that I'm not just referring to, to, to 
you know, your festival or ours, but the ones I see on on Moving Poems, for example, which is a regular newsletter, aren't a lot of them very, in a sense, self-indulgent or, you know, solipsistic. It's kind of like my feeling now about the world, um, they don't necessarily have um, a, a resonance beyond themselves. Do you think that's an issue? I think it, you know it goes back to uh, you know the, the 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 democratic nature of uh, poetry film. You know, like it yeah. can be approached uh, by so many different people in so many um, different uh, ways. Um, and um, for me, the issue is that sometimes people don't have much to say, and so rather than they call it self indulgence, I would say like you know it's a bit. Um, hollow you know so some of the films are a bit uh hollow and and uh don't have much depth to them um so yeah but i definitely can see um you know what you mean um and uh you know there is definitely bad poetry films as well <laughs> sure uh, it's it's but, a but again, great, again, it's your, it's, expression. yeah no but as you're arguing i think it can also be a virtue because I, I, you know, we have an expression in French, you know, some say, ça le mérite d'exister, you know. <laughs> and I think that for a lot of these things, you know, they have the immense merit to exist. And, you know, I saw some of the films there. I, I can think of one uh, in, uh, in, in particular, I can't remember the, the name or, or the author now, but, um, you know, it wasn't a great film. But I sort of thought, wow, this creator is in her early 20s, you know, and she's put it out there. And I think that 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 in itself is an achievement because, you know, you've got to start somewhere and, um, you know, they can you can only improve. And I, I, I often I sort of um, always admire people that will have a go and do it, you know, and maybe the first you know, two or three times they make something, it's not that great. Um, but then the, they themselves grow through the process. And so that the, possibly five years later, they're winning, you know, international awards. Yeah, um, absolutely. And it's uh, a way to, uh, you know, test and develop your uh, creativity because yeah. of, but again, the openness that we were talking about earlier, the fact that there is not... Uh, you know, a prescriptive way of uh, making a, a poetry film. Uh, yes. It's, uh, it's. A, I, I don't know whether to call it a medium or a model of filmmaking. It, maybe a model of filmmaking is a more appropriate uh, way of uh, defining it, but it's a model of filmmaking that uh, I think, in, in my opinion, really fosters creative approaches and, you know, like uh, uh, forces uh, creators to... to um, really test the, the boundaries of, of creativity, which is uh, good because that, you know, that kind of develops your broader creative approach to, to things that can be applied to other uh, creations, other films or um, um, videos and, and um, even, you know, even going beyond the audiovisual realm uh, can be applied to other media as well. So it, it, it's um, the perfect mode of expression to you know test develop foster you know someone's creativity Absolutely. Uh, and that's like again as we were saying earlier confirmed but but it's a huge variety of approaches to to poetry film we had uh, poetry films that uh, you know were basically animated films uh, live action films you know documentaries uh, narrative based uh, poetry films, poetry films featuring um, special effects. Um, dance. And, uh, you had a lot of all, dance, all, all, a lot, lot of dance, of, uh, I noticed. Films. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of dance uh, films. So, so it's, um, a, you know, a mode of expression, a mode of filmmaking at, at, um, um, that crosses a number of genres, yes. uh, which, is, which is quite interesting. Uh, and, you know, as a consequence of that, that's, a, you know, going back to your original question about the popularity of poetry film, that's another reason why perhaps it's so popular, because, um, you know, documentary is not 
everybody's cup of tea you know mm. uh, uh i don't know horror is not everybody cup of tea cups of tea but uh, poetry film allows you to uh you know draw upon other genres and uh you know mix the genres that you like with uh, with poetry film so if you're into documentary you can uh, create a documentary based poetry film if you're into animation you can uh, and not necessarily documentary but you you know you can uh, develop uh, um, an animated poetry film uh, and that's um, and that's what we saw um, in the submission yes for one, one of your winners was an animation yes yeah, so i noticed that you know i'm also an academic here at the, at the university at victoria university in wellington and uh, i'm quite interested in um, tourism marketing and uh, more specifically tourism commercials and ah. uh, nowadays, um, you know, so many commercials, if you think about it, are poetry films, essentially. Yes. Uh, there is yes. a strong presence of poetry in uh, contemporary advertising, particularly commercials. Uh, you know, the use of uh, poetic language um, alongside, you know, abstract, evocative um, imagery yes. in, in commercials you know this particular trend is even more apparent in uh, tourism commercials uh you know which which makes it interesting mm. so when uh, when i started working on the organization of the festival you know i got i got charles to be one of the judges by also asking to run this um workshop for students on um uh we had the same film. thought we did the same thing with our the president of our jury, Janet Lees, also got her to run a workshop. Yeah, it's a great idea. Uh, and so basically, we um, integrated that into the into one of the film courses that we offer here at the university. So students in the particular course had the opportunity of making a poetry film as oh. part of the um, uh, assignment, um, as the final assignment for the particular course. And uh, if they picked poetry film as you know, the, the the option for the final assignment, they had to uh, do the workshop, uh, which was run online. Uh, and um, yeah, so Charles did that. And we also flew um, Charles and Lillian over um, to New Zealand from Spain um, to be, you know, the judges and also be there for the screening of... Um, the students made as part of this workshop. So because, uh, you know, a, a number of films, I think uh, four or five films were made as part of um, this series of workshops on, on poetry films. So we had actual films being produced as a result of the, um, of the workshops. And, um, and then those films were screened in a special category out of competition. So they were not in competition for the festival, uh, but we had, a, like a, we had a special session during which we showcased the best two poetry films that came out of the course and those uh, workshops. Um, and so the students um, introduced them and talked about the process of making it, what they learned about it. Um, and, you know, Charles was there, which was quite nice as well. Um, um, and so that that's something else that we did, um, you know, as part of the festival, which, as you know, involved uh, screenings, but also a number of talks and uh, round tables. We had um, a round table on uh, the question, around the question of what is poetry film, um, which I still kind of, we was just kind of, still kind of, um, you know, trying to figure that out because, you know, as we said earlier, it's, it's, it's hard to define. Um, and, um, and then other, uh, other round tables and with uh, some poetry readings, Charles and Lillian, Again, uh, read some of their poems um, before uh, before some of the screenings. Um, and and tell me, screening. of your, how were yeah. you? Um, what was the reaction from the New Zealand media? Uh, I mean, I did hear one program on New Zealand radio, um, where of course their first question was, and you always get this, you know, is what is poetry film? You know, m many people have never heard of it. And, you know, every time you have to tell them what, what it is. You know, different people interpret poetry film in different ways, in a slightly yeah. different way. Uh, within the film world, there is, you know, the term of um, film poetry or, or poetic cinema, uh, which is, you know, slightly different from what we understood as poetry film. Because, 
you know, some people understand poetic cinema as a kind of cinema that is uh, poetic through images, yes. right? The way in which we understood poetry film for the festival was films that engaged um, explicitly in the form of adaptation or, you know, any other way with uh, written poems, either, either existing poems or poems that were, you know, written especially for the film. Um, but, um, um, you know, all of the films, either a voiceover or a text, sometimes both. Um, so, you know, that's how we interpret poetry film for the purposes of the festival. We also um, we also had uh, a requirement in terms of the length of the films. Yes. We only had the films uh, uh, up to seven minutes long. Yes, yes. Um, uh, and, and so we kind of privileged, you know, the short form poetry yes. films. Yes. Which uh, is not something that, um, you know, it's not it's not every poetry film um, that is so short. You know, there is there are a lot of poetry films that are much longer than that. But uh, that's the approach we took for the festival. Yeah, Alfie, Alfie, finally, I don't want to keep, keep it too long, but it, it's a, a double-headed question. First part is, will there be another edition of Aotearoa Poetry Film Festival? And if yes, you know, what will you do differently? <laughs> yeah, so that's um that's a very good question. I mean, we we um were thinking about that uh, last year, and we weren't sure. We thought that maybe we could do it every two years, but on the wake of the success of the first edition, um, we felt that we had to do it again. You know, to keep the momentum going. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do it again this year. Wow. Uh, uh, we had, uh, you know, as I said, uh, results went were beyond expectations because we had uh, hundreds of people coming along with, uh, of course, uh, hundreds of um, submissions. Um, and so there is definitely an interest, a demand for it. Uh, something I forgot to mention is that um, the Wellington City Council got behind the, the event and they uh, also... Um, sponsored uh, the um, evening screenings, which took place in town at the cinema called The Lighthouse, Cuba, um, which is on Cuba Street in the city center of Wellington. Um, and that was great as well. I think they were really interested uh, in the way in which we were kind of trying to add something new and different to the cultural uh, offering yes. in Wellington. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, for, from that point of view, it was uh, it was great because it was like one more event taking place um, here in Wellington. So, um, yeah, we, we'll do it um, again because we were encouraged by the response from the public and from the filmmakers. Um, a lot of people, you know, came along and said, oh, that was great. And we had a great time uh, meeting, you know, other filmmakers and other people who came to the festival. So, well, okay, you know, now we have to do it again. Um, and, uh, you know, the other reason why, you know, I would like to do it again this year is to keep that momentum going, make sure yes. that, um, you know, the, 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 there is um, kind of a sustained interest uh, in it. And, um, yeah, in terms of uh, how we would do it um, differently, um I mean, the first edition was quite ambitious in terms of, uh, you know, what we did. Uh, you know, one thing I, I said earlier is that uh, we we kept the submission fees quite low, in fact, very low, in order to uh, get as many submissions as possible. I think one thing that we might do is, like, slightly increase the, the, the submission fees so that we can have, like, a bit more uh, of a budget to organize the event because we heavily relied on the support of the university and the city council the university victoria university sponsored the event basically uh they gave us a grant to to run the event um next year we will not have that uh financial support from the university for a number of reasons um so uh, we'll have to rely a bit more on our on our own resources so um, that means that we'll increase the submission fees as a consequence of that, I'm expecting to have fewer um, submissions, which 
in a way, you know, might be might not be the end of the world because it would be an easier process in terms of uh, judging the films. Yes. If we have uh, fewer films, it might be a, a bit easier and uh, maybe we'll have, um, you know, just like people who are really motivated to and, and you know, people who have produced quality films who submit uh, to the festival. Um, and um, yeah, we'll probably have... Um, smaller screening fewer screening sessions because uh, as i said uh, this year we had um, two day sessions one evening session so basically we had uh, three screening sessions of around two hours each per day so i was like six hours of screenings uh which obviously require a lot in terms of organizing you know the venue finding the venue running the venue um um and and all that, you know, next year we might just do some evening screenings, maybe spread across um three evenings rather than two, but just the evening screenings, um, and just uh, focus on those. Um so rather than have uh, you know three screening sessions per day, which meant basically six sessions over two days maybe just have three sessions across three different days, just spread it across two evening, two, three evenings, uh, and just focus on the evening. Um, and maybe um, not run the round tables, which uh, required a lot of organization as well, because uh, you know we had to contact the, the, the panelists and get the panelists uh, sort of briefed uh, on the team and, you know, um, you know, prepare the questions and run the actual thing. Um, so yeah, basically to answer your question, we'll do it again next year. Uh, we'll do it. Uh, you mean this in, year, right? This year, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 2024, we'll do it again this year. We'll do it again this year and um, uh, in a, maybe a smaller scale and, and try to streamline it a bit more. The infrastructures are in place. You know, we have a, a website, we have a system in place for selection, for for screening the films. Um, we have, uh, you know, a social media presence. Now we have an established reputation. People know the event more or less. Um, and of course, we want more people to, to know about it. So we'll focus on that, you know, try to reach those people that we couldn't reach uh, this last year. Um, and um, and see and see what happens. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, try and do it again uh, this year um, a bit smaller. I hear you totally when you talk about the you, you know the cost structure of this kind of competition because I think one of our goals we had five uh, prizes in our jar first of a jar poetry film competition. And I think, you know, the, the, basically the money that people pay to submit a film, you know, becomes prize money, um, you know, and you need to top it up. But, I mean, I think the more prizes there are that permit that variety of work you mentioned to be recognised, um, I, I think it's fundamentally a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's what we've been um, talking about and that's what we might... Uh, do um of course the the cost of the prize is something to consider um uh, last year we didn't offer prize money and we were quite upfront about that we offered trophies and uh, recognition but we didn't have uh, basically the money to um to offer um you know a financial prize for for competitors um so we offered um um trophies and of course uh, you know and uh, an uh, announcement acknowledgement of the winners on of our course. social media yes. Yes, yes, website. Yes. Um, you know, something else that we might do differently this year is get more sponsors involved. Because uh, last year we only had the university and the city council, uh, in part because we didn't have time to uh, talk to many other entities or people, you know, because we're so busy just... Uh, organizing the event yes. it was all about uh, trying to make it happen uh while this year you know the website is already created we have a logo we have uh, 
or we have the film freeway page um we have the social media presence and so on so we have a bit more time hopefully we'll have a bit more time to uh, talk to sponsors and get them in, on board and potentially sponsor some of the prizes um yeah so that that's something else we might do um differently well, Alfio, look, I, I, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I, I want to say a big congratulations because uh, uh, I have a, uh, I know what it was like for Tanya with uh, and our selection committee with 80 films and our jury, but with your 250 films uh, and doing it from scratch, honestly, I take my, my hat off. You know, congratulations. I think it's, it's fabulous and uh, it's very, very encouraging to hear that there's going to be another edition of Aotearoa. Poetry Film Festival this year. It's fantastic. Thanks, Dan.